In this video, I'll answer all your questions you sent through to me. Check it out. Welcome back guys. So for the 1000 subscribers that has been about two weeks ago now, uh, I was traveling and so on. So I'm finally doing my Q&A video, all the questions that you sent through to me. Uh, there's quite a few difficult ones, quite a few interesting ones as well. Um, I'll give my opinion on all the matters, but I'll also try and keep it short and sweet because there is quite a few questions to get through. Remember to subscribe if you are new to the channel and you do like what is going on here. Let's get into it. So the questions will be sorted by date received, just from the oldest to the newest. The first question that I got was from Grant. Um, he said, am I planning to do any more collaborations with other YouTubers? And who do I look forward to or who can you look forward to seeing? Um, yes, I am planning to do more collaborations. I do like it a lot. It's fun to me getting a different perspective and so on. Because that's how you learn new things by learning from other people and their perspectives. So I'll definitely do one with Imbiber again. My Kiwi friend from Japan. I love uh, doing videos with him. He's just very intrigued with the Japanese rugby. He knows everything about it. So definitely with him. Then Modern Bok. He already approached me to do another collaboration. So early next year I do with him. Uh, then there's a few guys I'd love to talk to. But I have not approached yet myself. Uh, still planning to do that over the December holiday. Or you can approach me maybe if you do see this. Uh, Overlap Rugby. I'd love to do a video with them. Uh, the two Irish brothers, uh, as I hear, then Unbiased Rugby, Gareth Mason, and then one of my favorites, definitely I'd love to do a uh, video with Two Cents Rugby. I basically started my channel of watching him and just being inspired by him, so I'd love to do a video with him as well. The next question was from Call Me Legolas. He asked, what position do I play, did I play, or would I play? Uh, well, at primary school, I started out as a flanker. I absolutely loved it. I loved being stuck in the rocks, being in the malls and so on. But being skinny brew, um, as everyone got bigger, I kind of shifted out wide, got into the wings and fullback positions. Also really liked it. I had the nickname Happy Feet back then uh, because I liked sidestepping. But that was always the most fun to me. Uh, I have played 9 and 10 before as well. So I shifted around quite a bit. Uh, at school level, I didn't I really play after school, just a bit of touch rugby here and there. But if I was fit and strong enough and trained a lot, um, my ideal position that I'd love to give a go is number 13. I just love how they read the defensive structures, also how important they are to the attack of every, every um, game. They are important in cutting through the lines. They just, the fast, not the fastest guys, but they are quick. Um, and also have a good step and a good pass. I'd love to play in the 13. Then a few more questions from Grant again. Uh, do I have my tickets yet for the Sevens in Cape Town um, that I said I really want to go to? Not yet because I need to arrange my things a little bit. Uh, I'll know it in this week because I need to stay in Cape Town or I'm going to Cape Town the day after the Sevens. So I'm trying to arrange one day earlier and it is quite difficult to get uh, any accommodation for one night in Cape Town. How long will I be there? I'll be in Cape Town for just under two weeks. The next question Grant asked my girlfriend or as he calls it Miss Skinny Brew. Who will she get to make a video for me again or who's gonna send me a ne message next time uh, like John Navilliers did previously? Well I'm couldn't get much out of her but I'd love to get Sia Kulisi to send me a message. Uh, I do think he's a very inspir inspirational leader. I've loved how he played like always since the start. Chaselyn Colby, big fan of his. Faf de Klerk, also Pollard, also a big fan. So that's what I'd hope. But there's so many players that I'd love to get a message from. So hey, it's open for her to decide, but she's not going to reveal the surprise. Then a difficult question from Chester Donnelly. Do I think the Cheetahs and Kings should play in the European Champions Cup or the Challenge Cup competitions? Uh, or would it be too much touring for the guys or the players? It's an interesting one. Look, I don't think it is fair to rule them out because they are South African teams. Because they are playing in Europe. 
they are in that competition so they need to be embraced as a full on side so i think they should qualify to play in those uh, in those competitions but I, there is things holding them back i think they need to improve themselves first on pro 14 level before they can even think of qualifying for europe the cheetahs they are on track it looks like they could actually qualify for uh, european rugby if they actually did play a little bit better or continued doing what they are doing. Uh, they l look like they are handling touring okay. Uh, sometimes they do lose quite easily away from home. But they look like they could actually step up and do it. But the touring will be very long as you mentioned. They would need to have more players I think for both teams. Um, and with that you need more money invested in teams as well. So that's always a difficult one in South Africa. I do think if they did get more players, uh, a few more top quality players, like guys that has reached the highest of highs, even a guy like Ruan Pinar, he's been doing great, even though he's a little bit older now, he's been doing great. It would be great if they could get Franz Stein at the Cheetahs as well. And then the Kings also need to sign a few bigger names before they can even think of uh, playing in Europe if they did get that stuff right sure why not okay and then another question from Chester was what do I think of Newlands being knocked down and the VIP moving to Greenpoint look it is sad a lot of history is in that stadium and a lot of people will rem have a lot of memories in that stadium but at the end of the day it's better to see the union surviving than the stadium the union is really in a problem area if they do not do something fast. We might see the fall of the union completely. So at the end of the day, they need to do whatever they should to survive. Rather see a the fall of a stadium than the fall of a team. Doesn't matter what team it is. I'd hate to see any of the Super Rugby teams being taken out because they don't have the funds anymore. As for overseas-based clubs, they move all the time. The Australian teams move all the time. A few New Zealand teams move all the time. So... At the end of the day, it's just the stadium. It's about the team that matters. So they need to move. If they need to move to make the money, and the stadium needs to be demolished, yes, it's sad, but they have to do it. Then quite a few difficult questions. Ravi Reddy uh, from Twitter and Chris Potgieter from uh, Facebook. Both of them asked the same thing: Who should succeed Rassi? It's a very difficult one. There's three main candidates at the moment. It's David's Jock Nienaber. And Johan Ackerman. Um, all of them have pros and cons. None of them are just pros completely. Davids, I don't think he's up for it. He's not been successful with the Kings. And I don't know if he's ready to step up to that quality of rugby. And that heights of rugby. Ackerman, he is very successful in his career. He's been a great coach. Uh, he's had problems in the past with transformation issues in his teams. Uh, but I don't think that will be an issue. The team is very strong. doesn't matter uh, what color the team is. All the players are very strong in the Springboks. So I don't think that would be a problem for him. Uh, but yeah, it's difficult to see him coming in. Because Jock Nienaber, he is actually just a defensive coach. He came through with Rassi a long time ago. So he's worked with him under a lot of conditions. With him through a lot of games and a lot of teams. And he knows how to continue with Rassi's plan. He already knows a lot about it. So he knows how to continue with it. Um, especially with Rassi being heavily involved. He said he's still going to be heavily involved. I kind of see it as Rassi is going to be the coach off screen. And he's just going to tell the coaches this is the game you have to implement. So with that relationship he and Nienaber already has. I think Nienaber is the best guy for the job. But it's a difficult one. What is your opinion on that one? Then Chris Potgieter also asked me a few more difficult or interesting questions. Who would be my Barbarians team based on the quarterfinalists in the Rugby World Cup? I'm going to run really quickly through it. This is my team. Uh, if you want any explanation, just leave me a comment down below and I'll tell you who, also, who I also thought about. I mean, it's a lot of players. In most positions, I had four or five choices. So I just went with the best I could. Um, and also try to represent each country um, that did compete in the quarterfinals. So, starting up front, it is Mako Venipola, Shota Hori, Alan Alalatoa, then Itoje, Alan Wynne-Jones, 
Adi Savaya, Pieter Stefte Twee, uh, Dwayne Vermeulen, and the Faf de Klerk, yes, it's three South Africans in a row. Then Owen Farrell, I think he did quite well. Fukuoka from uh, Japan, really great tournament after the, behind his back. He's really good at running around the players. Damien de Allende, probably the standout inside center. There's a few other guys that really did well as well. Uh, Manichi Lagi, then Colby and Bowden Barrett. Quite a strong team over there. The bench, I'd say, Rory Best. Uh, Inagaki as well from Japan. He's scrummed really well. Furlong, the uh, Jager, Pocock, Gareth Davies, Korebeti, and then Franz Stein. I don't have any French players. I, It was difficult. I, the only real French players that stood out was the centers. Uh, but... With Damien Allende and Tilagi there, I couldn't see and I couldn't see the French players actually coming in there and beating them. So Chris Potgieter also asked, "Are there any rules in the current rugby world setup uh, that I'd love to amend? Uh, why would I change it, and how would I change it?" Mostly, it's small things that's always irritated me. Uh, if you kick the ball out or you kick it close to out and the guy puts his one foot out and his one foot in and he catches the ball, even though the ball technically would have landed inside the park, uh, that's deemed an, a full, uh, out on the full. That's always irritated me. I haven't seen it in a long time. I still think it is. You can still do that, but I haven't seen anyone doing that in a long time. Then another small thing that irritates me... Uh, <laughs> That I've just thought about a little bit more. I've it doesn't bother a lot of people, but scoring against the pole. <laughs> what happens a lot of time is teams kind of form a ruck next to the pole and they score very easily against the pole because no one can actually defend that part of the line. It's no one can stand in front of the pole. <laughs> it's difficult to me. If a guy's allowed to stand in front of the pole, sure, then you can score against the base of the pole. But I think just taking it out from the equation from a scoring perspective isn't going to matter so much in a game. Uh, it's kind of just a loophole that's always been exploited if you're close to the pole like that. Even though what usually happens is the other team defends really well and gets the team up against that pole and then they use it to their advantage. So I think that should be taken out. Then another thing that is a new occurrence, the ruck ladder or train that they form where three or four guys stand behind the ruck, just bind with each other so that the scrum off at the back has more kicking space. Look, technically they're in the rules, everything's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, they are binded with a shoulder, but it's just irritating to watch. It's, I don't know, I don't love seeing it. Pro I could, maybe, my mind could maybe change a little bit, but at the moment that's something that I'd love to see taken out, maybe by restricting the amount of players that can bind uh, to the back or how long your ruck could be or something like that but yet again then that would be just another extra rule added to the rule book another question he asked was with beast and brits being out or retired now after this season who do i think will replace them in the box setup uh, beast i think will be replaced by kitsov he's been great then who would also come into the setup i think it's going to be kuboka Oxenche or Thomas de Tway. All of them have been very good. Koboka, great season with the Bulls. Oxenche, great season with the Cheetahs a little bit back. He's also played well now as well. So uh, what between those two, I think, would be my favorites. Who would replace uh, Brits in the box setup? It would probably be Akka van Amerwe or Ntubeni, who's already been in the spring box setup. But honestly, I think Joseph Dweba from the Cheetahs Needs to be called up. He's been spectacular this last couple of years. Um, and I think it, he has it in him to play at that level. Then another very difficult one from Ravi Reddy on Twitter. He asked me to address the mass exodus of school players to overseas clubs. It's very sad. I don't like seeing it. it they are being enticed with a good, a good salary and great academies. And it's over overseas. So a lot of... Uh, guys straight off the schools do want to go overseas so that's what they're being enticed with I don't think South Africa could actually have a plan for them to actually fight against that um, in South Africa we have the advantage of selecting overseas based players so we don't lose those players uh, completely 
But what I do think the teams are doing, they want to sign the players as soon as possible so that they can have their five-year residency, uh, which has been implemented by World Rugby now, have their five years residency, and then they are eligible to play for their national team by the time they are 23. But at the end of the day, these guys need to be secured over here in South Africa. I think uh, let the older guys rather go overseas. You have established them in South Africa. You know what they can do. Um, go, let them go get experience over overseas. But get the young guys in so that you can manage them, manage where you want to see them in a few years, and establish who has the pro uh, the true potential in the national side. But it is going to be a difficult one. It's going to continue happening. And I don't know how it's going to be stopped. In my eyes, I always try and see the positive in it. They're going to experience a different game. Maybe they come over here, come back, and they'll play in South Africa again. Um, I mean, most of these guys, it's just proven that most of these guys, they are great at school level, but in the professional setup, they don't always cut it. Most of them aren't going to cut it, though. Um, most of them will probably have clauses in their contracts and be back within a year. Then you can have them in their setup. They've already had that overseas experience. But that's just me guessing. Then Micah Gehage. Or, man, I've always struggled to see to figure out your name on Twitter. So I'll just call you Micah. Uh, which is a top league signing to I think will make the biggest impact this season uh, over in Japan. I think... By by how Damien de Allende has played in the World Cup, he's going to be immense in Japan. I mean, he's all of a sudden enhanced his reputation so much. Uh, the, his team that signed him is going to be very happy with that. They paid a certain amount for him and they could have paid a bit more now after the World Cup, after him increasing his worth. And then Dwayne Vermeulen, as always, he's great in Japan as well. So I think he's also going to do a good job. Guys, I know that was quite long. There was a lot of questions. If there is any of the questions that I've answered that you would like a little bit more about still, just let me know in the comments. Then again, thanks for the thousand subs. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome. Um, I'm also getting monetized now, so I'm getting a little bit back for all the efforts I do put in. So that's great. Thanks to all of you guys. And then see, I'll see you for the next video. It's probably going to be some news. Um, and the Barbarian game that's obviously going to be against Wales on 30th of November. Cheers. <laughs>